when I've engaged the truth as a person, he's revealed himself as nothing but love. And of course there's justice. Most justice gets outworked here. The consequences of sin, of a, of a fallen identity and the behaviors that associate with that are damaging. That's why God doesn't like it. Mm. It hurts people. It hurts us. You know, so it's not that people get away with anything. And I think this is another thing. Well, those people should, they shouldn't get away with this stuff. And, and of course you get all sorts of stuff. Around, well, what about Hitler? And what about Stalin? And what about these people? Well, what about me? God doesn't view me any differently than anybody else. He sees everyone through Jesus because Jesus died for everyone on the cross. So yeah, those people, no doubt, will face the justice of realizing what they've done. And that will be the biggest justice, realizing that everything they did and every bit of damage they did and every person they killed was done out of their broken, lost identity. And having to come to terms with that, which I wouldn't want to come to terms with anything even the things I've done when I face the, the judgment seat and my scroll and the wood A and the stubble, even that was terrible sense of regret and realizing that I'd missed so much and realizing the motives of my heart were, were not pure all the time. And it was just like, Oh, but, but I knew the love of God and I knew God loved me and purified me through it to not know the love of God and have to face facing all the things that people have done, their decisions, their choices, and realize that all of those things are from the DIY tree mm -hmm. and people can remain self-righteous and argue that they can, that that stuff is self-righteously okay for as long as they want. But God's love will never give up and will never fail. And no one can be separated from the love of God. I mean, that's very clear from Romans eight, you know, no one, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing that's created can separate us from the love of God. And we're created. So we cannot separate ourselves from the love of God. When you read Romans 8, you know, 20, 30, 29 to 38, whatever, that, that whole passage, it's like, it's so clear. But if God is for us, who can be against us? The accusations cannot be against us if God is for us. Well, is he not for everyone? Or is he just for a few? the few lucky ones who happen to respond to the good news. No, he loves everybody. Yeah. Wow. Thank it you. It doesn't excuse them though. It doesn't excuse people's behaviors. And most people are actually living in what people think of hell now, not knowing God, not knowing God's love, desperately trying to earn their own self-righteousness, self-worth, value, esteem, all through doing stuff and, and realizing that it will never ever meet their needs diy self-righteousness can never meet a need for wholeness or peace or mm -hmm. relationship only god can only jesus can and finding a relationship in jesus brings us into a whole different understanding of god's love for us and the wonder of our dad who is a wonderful dad you know, i don't have to fear my dad I honor him. I respect him. I'm in awe of him at times, but I'm not going to fear him and be afraid of him. You know, I'm not going to be afraid of my dad. And yes, my dad disciplines me. Why? Because he corrects me and he trains me to become more like him, but he doesn't punish me if I get it wrong. He helps me learn from my mistakes and we even weaves my own mistakes into his redemption story and he redeems it all. That's how loving God is. Mm -hmm.